you remember that thing happened when you were at school where you were made to stand or sit in the corner because you'd been misbehaving, you'd done something wrong? I can vividly remember it happening to me. Um, it was either in year one or year two, uh, the primary school I went to down in Cornwall, the, the two years were kind of combined into one classroom. Um, I think it was Mrs. Young, who was my teacher, um, and I can still even picture the specific corner that I had to, I think I was sat in, yeah, I was put on my own table, all because I was, well, talking too much and talking too loudly. Um, it's interesting really, or rather ironic, that that's a big part of what I do now. Um, as someone who preaches, um, I'm talking. Um, and sometimes you've really got to project your voice um, and make yourself heard to a loud, uh, din-filled room or out in public places. Something about making mistakes uh, and getting things wrong and the consequences that, I well, say it's always part of life, although it's even worse, I think, when it's people we let down, who we know and we love and we care for, uh, and how we deal with that. That's something of the story of Peter uh, that I reflected on uh, this Sunday just past, where he denied knowing Jesus three times. Not just kind of, yeah, I wasn't with him on that occasion, or I haven't seen him in a while. No, I never even knew him. I wonder, though, whether Peter actually, in part, he set the bar for himself too high. And I wonder whether sometimes we need to actually think through what does it mean to live as an authentic disciple? What does it mean to live in a way where we're being real with God? We're not trying to live some false life or on a, a level or a plane that is beyond us. Maybe it's thinking through how will I determine this week not to compare myself to others? To think that I need to be something that I'm not, but actually be comfortable uh, and ask God to help me to be comfortable in terms of who I am and who he's created me to be. Maybe it's about, secondly, saying, how am I going to put steps in place so I can foster growth in terms of my life as a disciple? How am I going to engage in God's word? How am I going to pray? How am I going to connect with other believers? And how is that going to be part of my life, not just an optional extra uh, when I fancy it or, or when it fits? Maybe thirdly, it's saying, how am I going to determine to start each day afresh, recognising that yesterday I may not have got it right, I may have made uh, a whole hash of it, but actually it's a new day and a new opportunity with a new start where I can live and follow Jesus with all my life.